The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as always, my trusted co-host AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? What up? Ready to do this finally? You sound you sound super excited. I mean, like, should you just? Oh man, go? come on, let's go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I mean, it is catchers, but uh, yeah. So tonight we're gonna cover our catcher and our first base preview, and. Uh, we got a good guest on tonight to help us out with that. Before we get there, though, we got to talk some Super Bowl. Kansas City Chiefs pulled it out, came down from double digits back uh, late in the game. Kyle Shanahan blew another double-digit lead in the Super Bowl. Go figure. Uh, but I don't know, man. What do you think of the game overall? I liked it, honestly. Yeah, I thought it was a good game. Uh, definitely happy with the outcome. Happy that Big Red finally got that monkey off his back, got his own Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a long time coming, and um, yeah, I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a good game. Very action packed. I mean, it was a little, little slow to start, but definitely picked up in the second half. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I had a good time. Uh, I, I know it, it was funny. Like it, it was a lot at my house. I had a bunch of people over, but uh, you know, I caught some of the commercials too. I feel like this was one of the better commercial years in a long time. Like they were funny, they were entertaining. Not just like E Trade commercials, right? It was just like they were good. Yeah. I don't know. I liked them. I thought that they were they were pretty decent. The uh, the Charlie one with the tide or whatever was was a little played out and then yeah i did like the the end of it where they're the old people and then he's like oh i got it out and then she wipes some other schmutz on his shoulder and he's like "Ah." but that was pretty funny um but being a jeep guy obviously oh that commercial was gold dude that was was gold absolutely best commercial i agree with you all right moving on here we got a a good long show uh NBA trade line was to today. We, I'm not going to cover them all right now. If we got some time at the end, but you know, we got some good trades. So hopefully we got some time at the end to cover some of those. Uh, but let's get right to it, man. Get our beer of the week. Where's my, where's my music? Where? There it goes. Mm, beer. All right. What you got? I see. It looks like you got a big one in front of you. What's, what's all that about? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember if I drank this one on the show or not. I don't think I did. Uh, it's a Omegong uh, okay. Cool Merlot. It, mm. Merlot. It's like, yeah, a, like a... They have like wine beers. It's weird. Yeah, it's a Belgian-style double ale fermented with Merlot grape juice and aged in red wine barrels. It's the limited release for 2019. I picked this up for New Year's, actually. And I think it was only a four pack and me and my one buddy had one and I still have two left. Well, soon to be one left. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Maybe nine after tonight. It's, it's good, man. I mean, it's just a real smooth, like you can definitely taste the wine in it, but uh, I like it. Little, I, had little their, I had their Game of Thrones beer for the finale. Uh, it was mm-hmm. in this, this big gigantic bottle, um, yeah. but it, it, it wasn't really my cup of tea, but. It was okay. I drank it, <laughs> but just because I didn't yeah. want it to go to waste, but nobody else liked it in my house. Um, so I'm drinking an Oliver Brewing Company 206 IPA. Uh, found this damaged can in, in the Safeway on the so on the uh, mix and match pack. They don't usually have them there and snagged it as quick as I could because these are good beers, man. Um, I think I'd give this one like a four on, on untapped, so solid beer. Uh, nice. So good stuff. All right, man. Let's get our, our guest on here. I'm sure he's tired of hearing his rants as it is. Dave Eddy, uh, our dynasty guru here at Fantasy Six Pack, about to start his his own podcast. Make sure you check that out. I think it's starting next week on Deck Circle Podcast. Uh, find it on YouTube and Anchor and everywhere else that we're going to be p- posting this thing. Dave, you there? Uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember or heard about it joe but i was voted the most handsome uh writer in, in fantasy six pack uh yeah um you know i, don't know I, if you I, knew. I, I suck at the uh the slides i ah, I, see? 
I, there it is. I, I blame Keith for, for not showing up. Um, he is our producer who decides to never show anymore. No, not, not his fault. He's got a baby who's who doesn't dude. sleep and he needs to, he needs to try to sleep as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, I, I forgot to change the slide, but yes, voted most handsome writer on F6B. I don't know who gave you that. Maybe yourself. Um, but I don't, I, that doesn't even make sense. Joe. How could I give that to myself? Um, cause Pretty you easily. would, <laughs> cause you would AJ would too. Honestly, <laughs> like he, he, he would that himself. A, uh, a text over to Keith and say, "Hey, um, I just I found out I'm uh, been voted to most handsome writer on F6P. I don't I know. Some I, see a lot of that I don't even know about. That's <laughs> nah, all good. All right, man. Hey, before we get into you know the the awesome world of catchers and fantasy, we got to talk about this Mookie Best trade, man. Not that it's like officially gone through because there's some like weird crap going on with the the Minnesota pitcher, but let's just." This is going to happen one way or the other, I'm pretty sure, at this point. But what, let's talk about man. Mookie going to the Dodgers. I mean, first off, what does this do for Mookie? Is this hurt, help? I mean, he's already, like, fourth. Are you moving him down a couple spots? Are you keeping him where he is? Are you moving him up? Are you talking to me or Dave? Dave. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I wasn't sure, man. Um, I mean, it's 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 Mookie Betts, man. Like, I don't I don't know where you could put him that would hurt his value. I would say, if anything, it improves his value. Um, you know, he's he's in I would say a better lineup in a better position. Um, I guess I'd rather he was in the AL, but I don't think it really is that big of a difference when you're talking about Mookie Betts. True, too true. Um. So what about guy? You know what about some of this other? Uh, you know this is going to shuffle the Dodgers lineup around. I mean, I don't think anybody's really worried about Cody Bellinger. We'll get to him later. Um, you know, there's a there's Max Muncie around there. You know, there's a whole bunch of guys there. I mean, does this hurt anybody on the Dodgers, or are we just kind of keeping status quo with these guys? Hey, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think it hurts anybody on the Dodgers. Um, I mean, the only person that I could see in the deal itself that, you know, that, that you could argue maybe it hurts would be, you know, either Jock Peterson or, you know, uh, you could even say Joe Adele um, with, with Peterson moving. But Mookie Betts and anybody on the Dodgers, I think it's it's a it's a total win. Yeah, so I, I did want to ask you about that. So interesting that you brought him up, Jock Peterson. You know, he moves to the Angels. He he was a platoon bat in the, at, in L.A., and he, you know, he hit 30 bombs or 30-plus bombs last year. I don't know the exact number. Um, so very good season in limited at bats. Um, do you think he gets enough to be able to repeat that? I mean, everybody expects those home runs to come down if he was in LA and, and well, if he was with the Dodgers and still splitting time, do you think he gets like a, a more full complement of at bats on the angels and he can keep that home run total up or is he still going to split and it's still going to go down? I mean, I think the biggest thing specifically for Peterson that I don't think is, is a problem for Betts is switching leagues, I think, is going to be more difficult for him seeing, you know, pitchers that he hasn't seen a whole lot of. So I think, if anything, he'll struggle early, which might be the worst thing that could happen because, you know, Joe Adele is, you know, a call up away from, you know, making Jack Peterson more irrelevant. Uh, so that I think would be the biggest concern that I would have is just how quickly he can adjust to a different league. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely fair. I mean, so is there anybody else in this trade? I mean, I know we got David price, uh, Verdugo is interesting to me, especially in like, you know, dynasty leagues. I think he's, I think he's a young talented bat. Um, you know, Maeda went to the twins stripling went to the angels in a separate deal. Anybody else you want to hit on in this that, that interests you enough to talk about? Not, not really. I think I think the Maeda is an interesting one. I think that it, it's going to help the Twins as far as regular season is concerned, but I don't think that he's going to bolster their rotation enough to where he, he makes the Twins a World Series contender. They still need to do some work um, behind Barrios. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think he, uh, I think the Twins need need some help still in, in that rotation big time to be able to compete for sure. Um, so, all right, man, well, let's, let's get to the catcher strategy or the catcher preview here. I'll start with a little bit of strategy talk. Um, so, you know, the, the thing with catchers is me, it's like, you know, so it, it breaks down between one or two catcher leagues. Let's, let's start with one catcher leagues. I, 
I firmly believe in in waiting. I'm not paying up for catchers. I think you have to, in my opinion, overpay. And we'll get your opinion on that in a little bit, Dave. Um, overpay for the top two. Uh, and then, like, even the middle guys, like, you sort of feel like you're overpaying. Yeah, it's a little bit safer to get some of those guys. But I don't know. The difference between – it's almost like tight ends. Like, if you don't get Kelsey and you don't get Kittle, right, then – it's usually kind of a crapshoot what you're going to get. And the difference between three and 15 is like, let's just put points on it. Let's, it would be like, you know, 50 points over the entire season. It's not enough to matter to me. So I, I think I usually just wait and kind of grab one of these guys. who I think is an up and comer could kind of come out of nowhere. And that's usually how I attack tight ends. And there's always one that kind of just, you know, blows up and, and, you know, or there's a waiver wire guy who you can pick up. That's kind of how I attack it. Now in two catcher leagues, <clears throat> it's tough to grab two of those guys. Right. And you, so you could get really burnt and it, you could get stuck with like a, a Jansen and then like, I don't know, somebody even worse. Right. You know, like a backup, t- uh, a backup catcher and be really screwed. And, and actually, you know, catchers had a big debate with, uh, a, a, you know, Mark Strasburg in, in, uh, on the Slack channel a few weeks ago about two catcher leagues. He's like, well, why wouldn't you want to play in the two catcher leagues? Like guys like us who do this, you know, we should know better and we should be able to find the, 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 the rhyme, the diamonds in the rough. And I was like, dude, literally like the late, late catchers who get you like 10 home runs and they bat two twenty, It's literally negative value for your team because they're not providing enough counting stats to overcome that, that terrible batting average. And yeah, you maybe you'll find one that hits twenty home runs at best two twenty. That's, that's barely still enough. <laughs> it's just like ugh. So I, I I think I go with one of these like middle tier guys, <clears throat> and then maybe go for one late. So I played a little bit safer in two catcher leagues, but I still don't go for one of the top ones unless they slip. Um, AJ, you got any different take on that? No, nah, pretty much the same deal. <laughs> um, you know, you, you got to just look at at really how you want to make your team, you know, in a given league. So I was just trying to figure out, okay, well, I know I'm drafting in this slot. So I, I, I try to figure out where certain players could fall to me. And if I just don't really like the catchers that are falling or where they're falling, you know, then I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to punt it and, and go for a guy or, or stream a guy or, just not even use one. Yeah, uh, that's that's I, always an option too. I've seen I've, that happen I've many, done many that times. Multiple times in multiple leagues for you know multiple weeks at a time, just because there's other guys out there that I'd rather have on my roster and and rather keep you know in in, in my grasp. Let alone some guy that might get me a hit, uh, maybe a random homer in a in a given week or something like that. So you know, it's it's just a crapshoot for the most part. Yeah, I tend to agree. All right, Dave. So let's jump into this because uh, you know if we ask you the strategy question, it gives away some of the the answers to your question to the questions that we have for you here. So let's start off right on the bat. The top two, right? JT Romuto, Gary Sanchez. Their, their ADPs are, you know, fairly high, higher than, than than the rest of the crop. You know, we're looking at a, um, sorry, we're looking at NFBC here. You know, we're, we're seeing Real Muto go in the mid 40s and then uh, Sanchez going, you know, later in the 80s. You know, they're, they're definitely the, the first two. Uh, Grendel is kind of close, but still still another round or so behind. Do you pay up for these guys or do you wait? Is, you know, is their ADP worth it? I mean, I don't think so. I, I agree with pretty much everything you said about, you know, single single catcher leagues, two catcher leagues, you know, um, I, you would have to pay me to, to take a catcher um, even in the middle, you know, of the draft. I'm pretty much going to treat them almost like a defense, you know, in football where I'm going to build everything around it. Um, I might have, you know, a few um, even, you know, backups, if you will, guys that are going to sit the bench before I start messing around with the catcher. And then two two tier le- or two uh, catcher leagues, like you said, you know, you kind of have to get somebody so you have at least one, and then you just you know treat that second catcher like you would you know your one catcher league. So, yeah, I, I think all three of us completely agree. All right, 
AJ, what you got? Uh, again, I think it kind of depends on my league and and what I'm trying to do with my given teams. But I'm not against paying up for for these guys if uh, if it looks like they're falling, you know, a little bit. I mean, obviously their ADPs are, are pretty high for for what they are. So I mean, Sanchez obviously has power, but now we got to look at it, whether or not he's an injury risk, um, you know, that sort of yep. a deal. So I'd be more inclined to go towards Real Muto over Sanchez anyways. Um, also, being a Phillies fan, then that makes more sense. So. Homer. Don't, don't, don't play with your heart, AJ. So, That's how you uh, lose. Yeah. <laughs> I get second place yet again. Woo! Yeah. Nice. <laughs> going to name my team's captain second place this year. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, other than that, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be reaching for these guys in too many leagues. Uh, I, I let somebody else go after them. Cool. Um, all right. So, you know, the, we had the, uh, so we talked about the top two here. Um, Kind of, kind of the next tier I wanted to get your opinion about too, Dave. So you know, in the next tier, I, I'm kind of skipping. I, I, I'm kind of skipping Grandal, but like the tier after that, you get Garver, you get a Perez. Uh, then there's a couple of older guys in there too, like Wilson Ramos, and and like you know, Yadi Molina kind of always makes his presence known, but you know, he's not really quite in that tier. But you know, he's he's still valuable, like. What are your thoughts on like Perez coming off an injury, Garver breakout season in 2019, like kind of out of nowhere, um, Ramos, uh, you know, and Molina both getting older. Like any of these guys, somebody that you would target, and why? I mean, when it comes to like, especially the catching position, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go after one of the top guys. So if I'm not going to go after the one of the top guys, I'm going to try to play it pretty safe. So somebody like. You know, Christian Vasquez, I'm going to pass because I, I just don't see, you know, I haven't seen enough consistency from him. Uh, Mitch Garver, I'm going to pass. I haven't seen much consistency from him. Will Smith, <clears throat> pass. He, he hasn't shown me enough yet. Um, even though Perez just missed the entire season, other than that, he's been pretty damn reliable. Yeah. So I, I would I would consider Perez. Um, Wilson Ramos, pretty reliable. He's going to get at bat. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, if I'm... A catcher, I'm just going to play it very safe. I know I'm not going to get a high-end guy. I'm not going to play a high-risk, high-reward. I'm just going to try to slide somebody in there that's going to get me up bats, get me some counting stats, and I'm going to just kind of set it and forget it. Yeah, I totally agree there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do like Perez. Yeah, the injury worries me a little bit, but... I mean, he was an absolute beast, you know, before he went down with this injury and super consistent. And he played more games than, you know, most of these other, you know, quote unquote, everyday catchers. You know, obviously none of them are everyday, but he kind of was. You could slide him in a DL slot and, and um, you know, he'd still play for you. So you were getting usually about six games out of him in a week. So that's always nice. Um, and, and honestly, that may be more frequent this year with him coming off the injury. So definitely like Perez this year. Uh, he's someone I'm kind of stashing, you know, hopefully let him fall a little bit and see if, if he falls to me in the right spot. I'll, I'll jump on him. But yeah, I agree with, with Dave. You know, a lot of these guys, you just don't really know much about him. You haven't seen enough out of him yet. So uh, I'm passing on a lot of those guys. Um, but so with that in mind, Dave, you know, what about these guys that you can get basically for free at this point? You know, you're, you're looking at like a Travis Deonard, huge second half last year. Um, Sean Murphy played 20 games. OK, but it was still very productive 20 games. Um, you know, his brother from another mother, Tom Murphy, you know, now that Navarez is is, is gone. Um, it gives him a little bit of a leg up. I mean, what do you think of any of these guys or, or any of these other guys that basically you can just easily waste a last round pick on? Yeah, that that's going to be 
you know, in a redraft league, 12 team, that's, that's going to be who my catcher is. It's going to be someone in that, you know, time frame that you just named, you know, Carson Kelly, uh, Alfaro, Sean Murphy, Mejia, uh, Molina, you know, that's going to be a guy that I'm going to roster. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't even pay up for, you know, uh, some of the guys we were just talking about, Perez, Ramos, et cetera. I, I'm just going to take and pretty much, you know, maybe have the last catcher, the last starting catcher that comes off the board is going to be mine. I've done that in many, many leagues. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you guys will hear here in a minute uh, who who my undervalued player is. I, you guys might have to, you guys might snake him after I say it, but he's been, uh, he's definitely a guy, the guy that I'm, uh, a guy that I'm targeting, hopefully in a bunch of leagues. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that being said, let's get to our over and undervalued players. Dave, give us, you start off, man. Give us your overvalued player. So a guy that's currently being drafted higher than you think he should um that's no doubter to me mitch garver um i like guys with a little bit of a track record whether it's you know in the minors in the majors you know something and i am much more likely to bet that 2019 for him while was a fantastic you know statistical season is is going to be an outlier as compared to going to be what you can expect from him so um fourth highest right now uh at 115 for an adp i i not a chance in hell i would draft him with the 115th or 215th pick um so so that's for me um the probably the the least the, the undervalued guy to me and maybe this is a little bit just because i'm more of a dynasty guy and kind of more into the prospects and than most people um but but i would go sean murphy um, I mean, I would kind of rather have him than I would rather have um, Garver anyways. I just, I mean, he's he's going to get you average at, at the least. Um, I guess it's to be seen how many at-bats he's going to get and exactly how much power he's going to give you. But, um, I mean, if he hit 275 and gave you 15 home runs, I, I don't think that would be bad for how we value a catcher. Um, and I think you're going to be able to, get him pretty easily yeah so um so yeah it, it's all good we usually do uh all overvalued first and undervalued but it's, it's all good you got yours out of the way um oh, my bad <laughs> no no worries man drop the gun a little um so I'll, I'll i'll go ahead and give my overvalued i'm going wilson Contreras. i mean i get it man like he's had some good seasons but let's be real. He's had some real crummy seasons too. And he seems like he's, he's on off on off, right? Like every other year. And he's a little bit injury prone at this point. Um, I mean, you know, steamer and depth charge really only has him hitting, you know, just above 15 home runs around 50 RBI and runs like batting average around 250. I mean, he hit 24 home runs last year and you're going to pay for it at this point with a slugging percentage of 533. Yeah, that's doubtful to happen again, guys. Um, and he still only had 64 RBI, hitting 24 home runs. So I'm just not – I'm not feeling him at his ADP. I think he's talented if he were to slip, you know, into the later, like maybe closer to 10 range for catchers. I might I might snag him, but – at where he's going right now, I, I don't want anything to do with him. AJ, who's your overvalued? Uh, my overvalued was was also <laughs> initially Garver, but um, you know I'll sit with uh, I'll sit with Sanchez. You know, like I said, if I'm gonna reach for one of those two guys, I'm going with the hometown guy. Um, and you know, I, I just worry about Sanchez a little bit with the injuries, and and uh, you know, just see see how he factors in to everything again uh once he's back healthy but i mean yankees are still going to be a really good team yeah. uh but hey, yeah i'm gonna i would i would say he's he's a little too too rich for my blood you know I, one thing i want to say about him not, not to drone on about it a little bit but i want to it's hard to draft somebody like sanchez knowing he's injury prone right because like you draft him so high you know he's talented when he plays he's a monster but like, what do you do with him if you don't have an IR spot on in your league, which everybody should at this point? But if you don't, like, what do you, you sit on a catcher? So you're owning two catchers while he's hurt for a third of the season every year. Like, 
That's why I, I really just don't want anything to do with him. Yeah, I mean, watch. He's going to go play 100 and, you know, he's going to play a full season for a catcher this year and prove me wrong because that's usually what happens. But I, I just, again, he's just an injury risk at this point, and, and, and I don't want to deal with the zeros he's going to give you many, many times. And then you're picking up, you know, total crap off the waiver wire. Um, all right, so my undervalued uh, – Dave, you hit it right on the head. Sean Murphy. Uh, maybe maybe a, a little close to heart because he, he won me a league last year. I picked him up late, kind of put me over the top. I, I was, like, totally hurting at at uh, catcher, and he pushed me over the edge at the very end here. But, you know, he, he played, what, 20-some games last year, uh, 20 games exactly, hit four bombs, you know, 14 runs. Uh, you know, the, the average was not the best, but – you know, I don't, I don't think that really kills you at the catcher. Um, you know, I think, you know, his strikeout rate was a little high, uh, but it was much higher than it was all throughout the minors. I think that's going to come down with just, you know, more time, more, see more balls in the, in the, in the majors. But I think you're spot on with like, you know, if he could hit you, you know, 15 home runs, 50 RBI. I mean, let's just think, think about the numbers I just said for Contreras, 15 bombs to 17. 50 RBIs to, what, 55? 250, about the same for Contreras. And you can get Murphy for free. Okay. Yeah. Think about exactly what's going to happen here. Like, this is a no 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 brainer Like, just snag Murphy and see what happens. Like, if he can get the full allotment of the Oakland uh, catcher reps, then you're – you're golden. You you just found you found the guy who is going to be you know the middle, you know probably five six seven ranked catcher at the end, and you got him for nothing. So, uh, AJ, what you got? All right, so I'm digging real deep. Um, and you know, a few years ago, this guy would have been potentially an overvalued player, um, but he lost his first base eligibility. Um, only has catcher utility right now, and he is kind of abysmal, but I'm looking at it more as like a two-catcher league option, and I'm going with Buster Posey. Uh, it, I mean, it almost really pains me to say that because he totally burned me two years ago in a league, and then last year I was like, eh, actually it was a couple of leagues, um, and I, I just kind of went after him for a couple of weeks last year in my weekly league and it was just like why why am i even doing this but again you know his his days of you know 2012 2013 2014 they're all gone you know i mean it's been two years since he's even hit double digit homers i i would like to see him get back there um you know he's not going to be a huge rbi guy but he does help you in average for the most part. He kind of sank down pretty low last year, so I think that's kind of an outlier. Um, I think he can get get back up there as well. Um, so, you know, if you're absolutely punting the position, he's my guy. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. I, I just, you know, I see Steamer and Depth Charts has him, has him projected at 11 home runs each. I don't know how you do that. They're hit five and seven, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I I hope he gets back there. I think he's a good player. I just think the wear and tear of the position has really caught up to him, and he's just kind of yeah. old at this point. So tough to say. But all right, man. Uh, let's jump over to first base, a position that people care way more about. Uh, so my quick strategy on this position is. It's super top heavy. Yeah, there's talent later. There's there's production later, right? You can get a lot of home runs. You can get a lot of RBI. You're going to pay for it with batting average in a lot of cases. Or if you don't pay for it in batting average, Eric Hosmer, then you don't you don't get the power that you ideally want from this position. Um, there's also a lot of guys mixed in here that they're kind of dangerous. Like they have had like one good season. Um, so... I would rather go after one of the top. I'm looking at the rankings on the board right now. I'm saying, you know, top five at worst, top nine or 10, I think. Um, and if I miss, then there's only a handful of guys I really 
feel comfortable with afterwards and I don't super feel comfortable about a lot of them. Um, but that being said, it is, um, it is a very top heavy position and you know, what it just keeps happening. Like it just seems like it, it's getting more and more top heavy as we go on. Like when we first started doing this, AJ first base was like, yeah, okay. Cause home runs weren't what they are right now. So it was yeah. like, yeah, just go get any of these guys and you're good. Uh, yeah. but now like, just their power isn't doing it for you. You need the power, the speed, the batting average, all in, you know, and every, it's everything. And it's, it's not this position anymore. So the landscape of baseball has changed and the first base position is not as deep as it was because of their, their production levels and what they can give you. So, yeah. uh, what do you think about that? No, I agree. I, I definitely, at least over the last couple of years have really seen, myself going after first base early um, and just trying to lock down one of these guys that's going to get me some power that's going to potentially get me some speed Um, you know just combo category guys that that I want to get and and then just not worry about it Um, you know and and if for some reason one of these guys does go down then you know I'll, I'll look at having some kind of a backup that's still there um, you know, or maybe like like a Muncie that's got you know positional eligibility, or even a Mancini, something like that, that I could throw in there if I needed to. Um, but yeah, I definitely still feel that way this year going into it. I, I want to get first base early, and I want to lock it down and not have to worry about it. Yeah, totally agree. All right, so Dave, you got to start here right at the top. Cody Bellinger obviously had an enormous season. Um, you know, what do we think about him? You know, can he repeat his monster season this year, or are we going to see more of what we saw in 2017, which was still good, so really, really good, or are we going to see 2018? <laughs> what What do you What are you feeling here from Bellinger? Um, I mean, I think that Cody Bellinger is is one of the best players in baseball. Um, I mean, my dynasty rankings, I have him fourth ahead of Juan Soto. So if that gives you an nice. idea of, of, you know, how I feel about him, um, I think that Mookie Pets is only going to make him better, whether, you know, whether Mookie's going to protect him or, or whatever. Um, I just, I don't see Cody Bellinger going downhill. Um, I mean, I, I like that he's got, you know, that first base eligibility and he can steal bags. That's kind of rare. So, you know, that actually for me gives him, you know, a bump up, you know, and that's why I have him number one is, you know, even if it's just because, you know, he's going to get you double digit steals. So no, I don't, I don't worry about Cody Bellinger one bit. Fair enough. Fair enough. AJ, any, anything else on that one? No, I, I'm not worried about him. <laughs> especially, especially I didn't think so. Keep coming there. I mean, it's, yeah, like they said, it's one of them is going to be protecting the other, and then vice versa the next inning. So it, yeah, it's pretty, just, <laughs> pretty mass, pretty massive there. It's going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Um, I, I don't know if if either of you guys saw my tweet from either yesterday or last night or something. Once this news broke, I saw it, and I I tweeted something out about. Uh, Dodgers get, oh, I said like February 2020, Dodgers get Mookie bets. October of 2020, Dodgers still do not win World Series. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> something will happen. Something, yeah. Something Somebody else happen. will cheat and beat them. Sorry, Dodgers fans. Uh, um. <laughs> anyway, speaking of cheating, no, just kidding. Um, Pete Alonzo took the baseball world by storm last year, won Rookie of the Year, had a crazy, you know, home run derby. Um, basically, are you paying up for this guy though, Dave? Or I mean, you're you're looking at a third, maybe even a second round pick, depending on the size of your league. Um, uh, you know, if it's dynasty, he's already owned, unless it's a startup. Uh, I mean, what are you what are you looking at for Alonzo this year? Um, I mean, I, I definitely like Alonzo a lot. Um, I think that if you're going to expect him to repeat last year's numbers, you're going to be pretty disappointed. Um, I mean, he's still a top 
five at worst first baseman for me, but I, am I going to pay up for him? I'm not going to pay up for him. No. Um, I think that he would be a guy, not that I'm like super down on him, but he would be a guy that I think I'm going to probably be low man, you know, in, in a draft on him. So he's going to be gone before I would get around to picking him. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Yeah. I mean, you know, so I, I alluded to this uh, last last show with with Howard Bender and uh and my rankings so my, my initial rankings went out and they're and they're basically off of projections with a, with a little bit of my gut feeling on it but I still have Alonzo high is he gonna hit 53 bombs again hell no I mean like let's be real like how many players have hit 50 in a row but I still have him very very high I was just looking at my rankings now and um I just closed it of course and my phone won't respond so there it goes so, you know, I, I see that, that I've got Alonzo three overall for this season. Um, yeah, I could easily bump Rizzo, Olsen, guys like that above him, but but I think he's, you know, three, four, five range. They're all really super close in my opinion. Um it you know, it Rizzo's kind of arrow is pointing a little down, Olsen's pointing a little up, Alonzo's probably pointing up because he's young and really talented. So I think I would choose him over Rizzo. Olsen could flip flop at this point, in my opinion. But um, yeah, he, he's still going to be really good, just as just as Dave said. So uh, moving on to a guy here who had a major breakout season last year, uh, Josh Bell. Um, you know, hit hit over thirty bombs, almost forty. Hadn't hit over, you know, hadn't hit more than what twenty six, I think, before. Maybe let maybe way less than that. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, his, his oh his highest before that was uh, twenty six yeah that's right uh, back in two thousand seventeen you know kind of disappointed he was a big prospect coming out you know do we think it was a fluke last year that he hit this many home runs could he even get close to it again like even like the thirty range or we think it is going to go back to being just typical Josh Bell that we knew before. Uh, Josh Bell is a tough one, man. Like it, Josh Bell to me is, is that high risk kind of high reward? Um, because you know, he can either just be absolutely on fire or he can be a dumpster fire, you know? Um, yeah, he's a guy that I, I would rather just, you know, stay away from again. If we're talking about, you know, single year league, I probably am going to be, you know, a little safer. So again, I, I'm probably going to be low man in the room on Josh Bell. And by the time it comes around for me where I would, you know, start thinking about taking him, he's, he's going to be well off the board. I think, I think you and I both, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I'll have any shares of him this year unless I just try to reach for him. Uh, I, I think a lot of people are going to be going all in on him. Uh, I do like him. I like his upside. I did have him in a dynasty league. At one point, I may have traded him the year before I got out of it, and that was like two or three years ago. So it was before he was really did anything. But um, yeah, so moving on to uh, somebody who didn't necessarily break out last year, uh, my friend and yours, Paul Goldschmidt. I mean, is he already past his prime? Can can we just go ahead and say it? I mean, is two thousand nineteen? home runs and runs were, were on par with what he had in, in 18. Uh, he actually had a slight uptick in his RBIs last year, which was nice. But he doesn't run anymore. Um, he's got 10 stolen bases in the last two seasons alone after averaging 23 a year um, from 2015 to 2017. Uh, his average, his OBP, were both the worst they've been last year since his rookie year i mean to me that says he's probably past his prime but let me let me get your thoughts dave what do you what do you think i think this is the first time that we're we're gonna disagree um i mean he's only 32 so I, he's not old i mean he's getting there but i mean i think he's right at the end of his prime but i still think he's one hell of a player um I mean, if you penciled them in for 100 runs, 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, I don't think anyone would remotely argue with you with that. 
And I think that's for a first baseman. I think that's totally fine. Now you nailed the average. I mean, two sixty with a career of two ninety five. Yeah. So you know, yeah, he had a he had a rough rough patch um, last year. But I mean, I, I I would feel comfortable saying you know if you gave me an over under of two eighty for his average, I'm going to take the over. So um, I'm probably more the high man in in the room on, on a Paul Goldsmith for 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 just twenty twenty. What do you think, Joe? I still have him six. Uh, I don't feel good about it, though. I'll be honest. Like, you just feel like he's going to... 36. Yeah, man. It, it's it's just one of those, like... I mean, he's going to produce. It. The average is hopefully going to be a little bit better than last year. But I don't know, man. Something He starts off, like, massively slow the last couple of years. It's like, oh, man, what are you going to do with this guy? He went through a couple really bad cold streaks last season, which didn't help him. But he has like these massive hot streaks too. And you're like, oh, all right, there he is. He's not going to run anymore. Like that's out the window. Don't even worry about that. Um, he's not a runner anymore. Um, he's no. just a straight up power hitter and he's, and he's good at it. So I, if you passed on Goldschmidt at six and took some of the guys behind him, I'm not going to kill you for it. Um, but I, you know, in my rankings, I have him there, but he's he's one of those guys I have a red flag next to in my personal rankings. If you know, when I when I do my drafts, he's one of those like eh, maybe I'll wait if he's the first baseman at the top of the list at that point and go maybe wait another round and just see what happens. So yeah, yeah, I mean he still hit thirty four homers last year. Yeah, so ninety seven again. Runs, he produces ninety seven RBIs. He yeah you know, he he's his walks dropped. A decent amount. I say he's a better rotisserie player than a head-to-head player. And I know you and I play in more head-to-head leagues, which is why you and I both go, eh, Goldie. He's like, you know, like Bob Long with the consistency rating. Like, Goldie's not consistent at this point. He gets on real big hot streaks and real big cold streaks. And so he burns you really bad in head-to-head leagues. And that's why he's tough to own. And there's a lot of people that play head-to-head leagues. So he's tough to own in those leagues. Yep. Yeah, I owned him in all three of my leagues last year. <laughs> and I know you did. I was just like, I was so stoked to have him because I love Paul Goldschmidt. And I just, I don't know. I just wasn't excited to have him because yeah. of the streaks. I'm like, oh, here we go. Well, you also here had to draft go. him in like the second round last year. So you are getting a, a yeah. big discount I, this year. I, I so maybe, you know, maybe back. sixth ADP sixth ranking for him yeah. uh, is it, a good value for him. It's just one of those, you still, you still are nervous taking him because he seems to have declined just ever so slightly every year for the last couple of years. And you're wondering like, is the bottom just going to fall out? You know, if he starts off slow again, you always have this in the back of your mind. Is he going to break out of it? Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to watch it for a month, a month and a half sometimes, you know, but <sighs> it, it, it's happened. So, all right, let's finish this up, Dave. Uh, give us your overvalued first baseman. All right, you ready for me to uh, open Pandora's box a little bit? Yes, Go for please. It, man. Yuli Goulier. You- man, you are reading our minds, dude. Uh, am I? <laughs> you have yeah. him as your overvalued? Listen, this is going to be funny, actually. Well, listen, man. Um, oh, that's cool. my, my question is going to be, what's he going to do in 2020 without people banging cans? You know? Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I'm we just had, so, we I had mean, this conversation last week. Did you? Okay. Not just so, with him, but like the whole Astros right. team in general. Like, do they all get a tick down? It sounds like in your book they do. I mean, if you, if you look at the splits on him, um, pretty close to even home and away last year. 50 more at-bats on, on the road. But – 311 at home versus 287. So, okay. I mean, I, you know, everyone should do a little bit better at home. You look at power numbers again, 50 less at bats, 19 home runs at home, 12 on the road. So, I, okay. He plays in the good hitters park and we can make arguments all we want. But, um, you know, when, it, when you get away from your elite players like Altuve and Bregman, we start talking about, you know, this guy. This is, I think, who benefits the most from, you know, people smashing, just smashing on trash cans. So, yes, I think that he would be my overrated guy until he can prove that he could not cheat and still put up good numbers. I hear you. I have 
knocked down all the Astros just ever so slightly in my rankings. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. Mine's going to be DJ they Mayhew. I mean, look, I know this guy just crushed it last year. I mean, it's like his best season by a mile. Uh, you know, 26 home runs. He's never hit more than 15. Uh, he's, he's 31. I mean, this is just like, I know the ball's juiced, but come on. Like (laughs) we, do we really expect this to happen again? He's going as like the number seven first baseman right now. And I know the position eligibility is awesome. Um, but I am not drafting him as my starting first baseman. Uh, I want a little more. I, I personally want more, uh, power that I can, count on than DJ LeMayhew hitting 26 again. Uh, the batting average is going to be good. It's, you know, he's always a good hitter. He's going to hit near 300. So that's, that's great. Right. But I think the RBIs dip. I think the runs dip. Um, and I think the, you know, the batting average or not the batting, the, the home runs dip as well. So I, I just don't see him being that, that top, you know, 10 first baseman this year that he was last year. Yeah, uh, I can definitely see that with with LeMahieu, and I do like LeMahieu, but more more because you can plug him in and play him everywhere. Yeah, uh, but where he's going to be going, I agree. I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to touch him this year. Um, and I'm going to go with the guy we talked about a little bit earlier, Pete Alonso. I just don't think I'm going to own him this year. And I mean, I get it; the stats are there. <sighs> monster monster year last year but i want to see it again i want to see you repeat um or or not necessarily repeat but close to what you did and be as consistent and i mean the power is there that's that's clear so i'm not worried about that but i just think that you know sophomore season for a lot of these guys no matter who you are it's rough and people people have time to figure you out a little bit more. They're gonna they're gonna be learning how to pitch to this guy a little bit better. Um, I just think he's gonna drop off, and he's not gonna repay the people that that draft him where his, his current ADP is. Fair enough. All right, Dave, finish it up here. Undervalued first baseman. All right, under undervalued. I'm gonna go to the geriatric unit here. Um, and I'm going to pick me up some Edwin and Carnacion. Let's see. He is all the way down to 17th on the rankings, just <laughs> ahead of the juggernauts, Luke Voigt and, and Christian <laughs> Walker. Um, listen, man, it, uh, you know, I like consistency, okay? Um, yeah, Edwin's old as hell, but you only did him for one year. And from from the first base position, I'm not planning on getting any steals, um, you know, unless I'm getting Ballinger and paying way, way up. So if you want to tell me that I can get, you know, basically 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, um, and what should be a nice, I would think, an uptick in runs playing with a, a pretty good and young White Sox team, it's going to hurt you in average a little bit. Obviously, he's going to have to get a double steal to get you a base, but um, I, I think Edwin that low is an absolute steal for redraft. Yeah, I, I do like that one. I've, I thought about picking that one myself, but I went with Reese Hoskins. Um, you know, he he's all the way down at like thirteen. You know, I've got him at eleven, so not drastically higher. I think people are scared <coughs> off by the fact that his that his batting average dropped down to like two twenty, and he you know he hit twenty nine bombs last year. You know, down from thirty four the year before. I think he's too good of a hitter to to not improve on those numbers again. And you know, all the projections kind of agree with me um somewhere in the mid 30s for home runs you know for whatever reason his slugging percentage dropped last year uh down from almost 500 to 450 um his bad bit dropped you know just it's not like you know he was walking more he was striking out just slightly more I, I, i don't really know what the difference was that was causing him not to just smash the ball like he was you know maybe it was just all the pressure on the Phillies last year after they got Bryce Harper and you know you saw it right Bryce Harper didn't start off well um I wonder if this team is just gonna just kind of be like you know what screw it what do we got to lose now like nobody nobody thinks we can do it 
So they're going to be able to come out and just be and just play. So um, so let's uh, let's all draft Hoskins a little bit higher than he's going and 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 reap the benefits there. I like that pick, obviously. <laughs> of course uh, you do. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I agree. I, he he was he was hard to own last year because um, I feel like he was a little undervalued, but then he just didn't live it up so i i could see a, a bit of a turnaround from him and i'm hoping for one of, of course um my player that i'm going with for take number three because originally i had yuli and uh then he was apparently overvalued uh, so i took him out and went with uh, e5 and he is also taken now so thanks for that, Dave. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Yandy Diaz. Um, look, this dude's only 28. He's basically been in the league for about three years now. Um, still not a ton of at bats. He's he's missed some time for some injuries, but dude, 14 homers and 307 at bats, uh, 53 runs, 38 RBIs. You know, he walks a little bit. Stole a couple bags, and, you know. His average doesn't kill you at, at two sixty seven. Um, so I, I think for a late round flyer, if you can get a guy that's also got third base eligibility too, and, and definitely have him for a corner infield spot or one of your other two spots, if if you have other guys out, you know, on a random Monday, Thursday, or whatever, um, I like Diaz a lot. Yep. Uh, I, I like that pick a little bit too. So, all right, man, Dave, that's all we got for the uh, position previews. Uh, why don't you remind everybody where they can find you on Twitter and, and what you got uh, in store for us this season? Um, so, oh man, excuse me. Uh, on Twitter, it's uh, at Corporal Eddie, and I got the well, the Dynasty Top 600 plus right now uh, rankings came out on Sunday. Uh, the, the funny story behind that is Joe laughs. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I knew it was good, but, but uh, yeah, oh, you're not, so okay. no, it, I'm not going to expound on that. We'll just let it be. Um, but, but that's out. I've got a lot of good feedback on that. So, um, got a podcast that's gonna, that's gonna kind of go hand in hand with that. So, uh, the rankings are in every other week kind of thing. Cause they're dynasty rankings, you know, they don't need to be updated every week. Um, but I, I'm going to put out a podcast that, that goes along with it. Uh, that's going to be in between the updates to the ranking. So i um, going to record that for the first time here in the next couple of days. So that'll probably be out sometime this weekend, Sunday, maybe Monday. Um, so I'll blast that all over, all over Twitter. And um, I, I'm sure everyone, if you like the rankings, you'll like that. It's kind of a little bit more of a behind the scenes on, you know, why I do the things that, that piss you off with the rankings. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah, and uh, you know, you write for uh, Prospects fifteen hundred, right? Too, you do the Detroit Lions stuff over there. Um, no, I I do Detroit Tigers, but yep, you're in the right you're in the right city. Um, but yeah, I cover the Detroit. What did I say? I covered, you said Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions. So I'm trying to get football's over, Joe. Right. I'm trying yeah, to get sorry, that bullshit man. out of my head. All right, and yeah, you yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. dragging me back in, man. I mean, are the Tigers any better? I mean, I'm an O's fan, so I, I'm I'm um, right there with you, man. I mean, the Tigers are better at baseball than the Lions are, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, sure. oh, but, um, but other I'll, than I'll that, give you that. Uh, but no, Sean Crop is yeah. like really close friends. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Lions drafter, uh, Tigers drafted the the Super Bowl winning quarterback. So that's our our claim to fame in 2020. All right. But yeah, I had the Tigers top 50 um, prospect rankings that came out way back in January 1st. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you're into reading about guys in you know, the Dominican summer league, um, you know, read up on Pedro Martinez jr. The, the guy that I'm higher than everyone else on. All right. Hashtag bloodlines. Hey man, it works. All right. Good stuff, man. Uh, definitely check him out. He does great work for us and, and I'm sure he does for prospects 1500 too. Um, I'm and he's a handsome son of a gun. Yeah, most <laughs> handsome writer on Fancy Six Pack. It's official. Yep. We'll have to we'll have to print you a certificate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hang it up on your wall. All right, man. Have a Freak good night. Uh, thanks for coming on. We'll uh, we'll have you on again soon. 
All right, guys. Enjoy your beer. <laughs> See you, man. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right, AJ, so we got a few minutes. Let's talk about this NBA trade deadline. You know, I wasn't really sure if we were going to talk about it. It seemed like there's, like, not a whole lot was going to happen. But, damn, it took off. Like, in the last hour, it was like, whoo, a lot happened here. Um, obviously, we know, like, Capella got traded like, yesterday or the day before. That was a big deal. Um, but today, like, I opened up my phone after dinner and just saw all these trades happen. Like Wiggins went to the Warriors for D'Angelo Russell, which seemed like a dead deal just yesterday. Uh, and it actually happened. So I don't know what changed, but they decided, yeah, sure, we'll do it. Um, uh, and then very last minute, you know, it was it was said that Drummond, Andre Drummond for the Pistons wasn't going to get traded. Like it just they weren't going to get enough offers for him. And then they decided to trade him for Brandon Knight, John Henson, and a 2023 second round pick. I want to start there. <laughs> Not just fantasy wise. Okay. What in the living hell are the Pistons doing? <sighs> Two garbage players and a garbage player three years from now? Excuse me? For a guy averaging 15, almost 16 rebounds a game and averaging almost 18 a game, like this makes literally no sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm not following basketball as much this year, probably because I'm not playing in the league. Uh, but... Don't worry, not a lot of people are anyway. I at least, <laughs> well, yeah. pretty Even the people that are in the league aren't playing, so it's cool. Uh, More than but, it was last year, but it's it's just not an active league. It's whatever. Yeah, you know, it's an afterthought, but it's cool. I, I mean, but that is just silly to me. I mean, I Drummond is a stud. I mean, that this guy's so a good. double double machine, and he's like a backbone of that team right now. Um, in, in my mind, at least, so I I can't I can't really wrap my head around that one. I, I, yeah, I just don't I don't get it. I mean, first off, like I don't really know why Cleveland would target him, but, but I mean, hey, if you can get him for you know pennies on the dollar, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even say like quarters on the dollar. They got him for pennies on the dollar at this point, right? Like, why not? Um, He's still just 26. I mean, he gets to match up with Kevin Love now, who does not play in the box. He just stretches the floor. Um, so those two are going to work very well together. Um, it's weird that like, Tristan Thompson was playing fairly well for Cleveland. Um, so I guess Tristan's clearly going to back him up. But, like, I don't really know how this is going to work out. Like, Drummond's not going to get – I don't think he's going to get as many minutes as he did in Detroit. But they were already, like, scaling back his minutes a little bit because Christian Wood was awesome for Detroit. And, by the way, Christian Wood's value, if he is still on your waiver wire in fantasy basketball leagues, go get him now. That dude's going to be a monster. He will be a league winner for you. Guaranteed it. Um, I, I just – Thompson's not leaving, though. No, but, that's the thing. Like you kind of thought there was gonna be like a buyout, but now they're saying there's not gonna be. So it's just a weird, it's just a weird situation. It's just like Cleveland being Cleveland again, right? Like, guys, stop being dumb. So I mean, I love, I love getting Drummond for them. Uh, but at the same time, like, he's a pending free agent, right? So I guess that's the reason why Detroit got rid of him, right? They knew he wasn't gonna stay. But it's yeah. like you literally got nothing. You got to, how do you have gotten it, something better for him? At least do like a to get at least do like a sign and trade or do something it. with him at the end of this year. Like somebody was probably going to pay for him more at the end of the season if you do a sign and trade, which happens all the time. So now the Cavs are going to hope they're going to do him because why would Drummond want to stay with Cleveland? I mean, yeah, Colin Sexton, but no, he's not really that good. Um, yeah. I mean, Love I like his is fine. Side, but Love's getting older. I mean, yeah, right. Love's is not the dominant little, player he was. It's just, just I don't think he's as good as everybody thinks he is, personally. But I mean, he has his moments, and and he does, 
you know, come out of this random shell here and there and blows up, which is great. But no, I, I mean, know. Love's a good player. He's not. He's not yeah. a super superstar anymore, but he's a good no. player. He's not going to carry a team, clearly. But yeah, I don't. know. This is just a weird trade. I think this is one of the biggest head scratchers of the entire trade deadline. Uh, one I didn't mention actually is uh, Marcus Morris is going from the Knicks to the Clippers. This has big fantasy impact, actually. You know, Morris yeah. was averaging almost twenty points a game with five and a half rebounds, dropping just three after three. Going to LA really hurts his fantasy value. He's going to sit behind um, Kawhi and Paul George. And, um, of course, those guys sit plenty, so he'll have some blow-up games. So on those games, especially like DFS nights, you'll want him. I own him in the Fantasy Six-Pack League. I think I'm going to wait and see what they do with Morris, uh, see if they can get him in the starting lineup. You know, Even if he's in the starting lineup, his usage is going to drop massively. Um, but uh I, I have a feeling Morris is gonna be more of like a streamer play in fantasy, uh in, in kind of your ten to twelve team leagues. Uh you know, if you're in a deeper league, maybe maybe keep him. But that's a big deal for Morris and you know for owners who were just kind of because he was kind of free, man. Like I, I didn't have to pay nothing for him. He got dropped or something. I don't I was kind of shocked to see him out there, but it was it was uh it was one of those like, okay, I'll just take a chance on him and he's been great for me. Um yeah. The next deal here is D'Angelo Russell uh, moves from the Golden State Warriors to the T-Wolves. Wiggins goes back to the Warriors. I don't know. My take on this is that this is a future move, right? So, well, yeah. so it helps Minnesota more now. I think Russell is a great fit for Minnesota. They needed a point guard. They got rid of Shabazz Napier. He's now with the war with the Wizards. Well, <laughs> He went to Denver first, and then he's now with the war with the Wizards. Yeah. I keep trying to say Wizards, um, or Warriors, but so kind of roundabout way to get there. But he's with the Wizards. Um, so Russell is a great point guard, a sp- a scoring point guard for the the T Wolves, and they've needed one. And maybe that will help, you know shut uh, Carl Anthony Towns da- down a little bit. But I mean. Wiggins was producing this year, but I mean, I, I don't think anybody thinks Wiggins is great. Um, no. But he's never lived up to his draft type. I mean, he started off like gangbusters this year, man. He was he was awesome. He's really slowed down. Um, yeah, the T Wolves just aren't that great. Um, you know the the big the big play for for Golden State is right is next year Steph, Clay Thompson, they're coming back. Russell's useless. <laughs> like you don't need him. So getting a guy like Wiggins to just fit in, maybe drop some threes now and then, slash the basket, that's a great move for them in my opinion. Uh Wiggins isn't great, but as like a third, fourth player, I think he's phenomenal for that kind of role. Um and and who knows, maybe they actually teach Wiggins to shoot and he can stop shooting, you know, four hundred the entire season. Um so that I mean that that's my that's my take there on that one. I don't know if you got any more thoughts on that. No, I mean, like I said, Wiggins just never lived up to the draft hype. He's he's just had some flashes here and there, but it, it, we've both owned him in fantasy, and he's burned us both, and yeah. he's just miserable to own. And it's like, dude, when are you going to help me? Although oh, we'll when say, you're I think I end. I think I owned him one year in the finals after you dropped him and beat you with him. So yeah, I, I think that was the first loss. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think it, yeah, because it was, and I almost had it, but he, Oh, so close, man. God damn it. But whatever. Yeah, so uh, about blocks, I think, but anyway, yeah, yeah I so- mean, there's some other random trades here. Nothing to really get excited about. Um, you know, Warriors is kind of cleaning house. Alec Burke and Glenn Robinson went to the 76ers. Um, you know, Ooh. just it's just depth. It's shooting and it's depth. That's yeah. really all that Which is. is. I mean, um, it, you know, they, they gave up a couple second round picks. No big deal. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, they got move they here. got one back though for trading uh, Enos to the Magic. So. Yeah, it, another interesting one, not super like fantasy wise, but I think it's good for like team. Is uh, the Grizzlies gave up Andre Iguodala and gave him to Miami? And Miami's a solid I, team this year. You know, Iguodala knows how to play, right? I mean, he's a good player. He's he's a leader. He's been in the finals many many times. Obviously, won the MVP. Uh, so like this guy's just a baller. Um, He's just a hard worker, and you know, hopefully, he can be a good complement player for that team. It probably needs just depth at this point. It, you know, they they need people to be able to come off the bench to compete and hopefully come out of the East. But you know, we'll, we'll see that the East is pretty much, my my opinion, locked up by by Milwaukee. But they choked last year, so maybe they'll do it again. Yeah, um, I mean, there's there's a lot of like good mediocre teams in the east i feel like yeah uh, with the sixers being one of them i mean miami's been right. playing really well mm-hmm. um I, I really like this trade for them actually i mean Dion waiters and justice justice winslow have been good for them they've they've been consistent players um you know they're they're just kind of role guys though to me they're not breakout guys um but you're getting you know iggy back solomon hill and jay crowder i mean that's that's yeah, a nice it's depth in my mind. I mean, I think like all of these guys are pretty much on par with each other, I feel like. And it's just it's a very even trade, mm-hmm. but I still think the edge goes to the heat with what they get back there. Um Yeah, they think that, they can do it this year. And uh yeah. you know, they've they've got some pieces to do it. They got they got Bam and they got um I was going to say Tobias Harris, but I know that's 76ers. Uh, but Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Jimmy Butler. Uh, the other guy who left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Six that's why I, I flip them up because they kind of play the same three, position. Only but, played um, three quarters against us the other night. Thanks for that, yeah. Jimmy. So, uh, But, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, you know, a very active trade deadline. You know, it's always kind of wait and see with some of these things. But to see kind of the, the big ones, like, you know, the big names and you kind of can predict how they're going to fall in place on their new teams. But how you win leagues in fantasy basketball, it, especially in head to head leagues, is finding those guys that because of the trade deadline or because their teams are just out of it and they're just playing their their youngsters is finding yeah. those youngsters, finding those guys that are going to get late season value and snagging them before anybody else even realizes it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest. Your teams in the, in the basketball league have been middle of the pack and you've kind of scraped into the playoffs. You just happen to pick up some of those guys both years and you got to the finals with them and almost beat me both times. (laughs) So it's, it's very, very possible. I did it in a league many, many years ago. I picked up Clay Thompson off the waiver wire when Golden State was terrible, and he was phenomenal. I was like, yeah. I didn't even know who Clay Thompson was, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, the guy's hitting like three three pointers a game. I'll do it. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to you got to look out for this stuff. The trade deadline really opens up some playing time for people who weren't getting any before, and just based off pure usage, their counting stats are going to be good. So that's what. That's what you got to do there. All right, man. Uh, so next week, we're actually going to take a break from our previews, and we're going to go into our prospect talk. Uh, nice. We got our good friend Chris Blessing coming back for that one from Baseball mm-hmm. HQ. Looking forward to that All show, right. getting some good beer uh, beer talk going on. Oh, yeah. That's what we always do with him. So be sure to tune in next week. Again, if you guys have not figured it out yet, we are on YouTube. We are also on Anchor, iTunes, Stitcher, Ooh. everything, guys. Like, go find us everywhere. It's just the audio on those sites. I finally figured out how to do it. Um, thank you, Anchor, for making this free and easy and everything else. So um, definitely reach out uh, to your favorite podcast app and find us there if, if that's easier for you. So um, that being said, we're done. I will uh, see you next week, AJ. See you guys. Bye.